there were many perpetrators of um, what seems ever more like a, a massive scam on humanity. Uh, regional governments from, you know, municipal to state, provincial, um, federal, the CDC, the WHO, the NIH and its lackeys. And the WHO, in light of this, maybe they're learning. They have come out with some new health guidance. Oh. Yeah. That's they've got, good. They've got some new, some new health guidance. They're organizing World Health. I mean, this is bound to be good yeah, stuff. Yeah, this is the World Health Organization, as everyone knows at this point. They're very alarmed now about some things that they've been, um, that we've been taking into our bodies. Very, very alarmed. Now, this actually came out in March of this year, at the same time as another thing that I'm going to talk to you about, the WHO, having produced this year. But um, massive efforts, they say, are needed to, uh, to deal with this thing that we're all taking into our bodies. And I just have to find it here. Here we go. The World Health Organization in March of this year. Matt, you, you want to guess? Um, you can you see it already? I, I can't. I, I think I dare not. Massive efforts needed to reduce salt intake and protect lives. Wow. Salt. It's salt. That's the super, who's really concerned about our salt Super intake. retro. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to read just a couple bits okay. from Okay. Okay. A first-of-its-kind World Health Organization global report on sodium intake reduction shows that the world is off track to achieve its global target of reducing sodium intake by 30% by 2025. Okay, first of all, where did the global target for reducing sodium intake come from? Okay, sodium, an essential nutrient, increases the risk of heart disease, stroke, and premature death when eaten in excess. The main source of sodium is table salt sodium chloride, but it is also contained in other condiments such as sodium glutamate. You can tell because it's got the word sodium in it. <laughs> okay. The report shows that only 5% of WHO member states are protected by mandatory and comprehensive sodium reduction policies. And 73% of WHO member states lack full range of implementation of such policies. The WHO wants us to have mandatory and comprehensive sodium reduction policies in place. Okay, um, just a little... <laughs> This is amazing, right? Like, this is so remarkable. Um, one more thing from, from this page, Zach. The global average salt intake is estimated to be 10.8 grams per day, more than double the WHO recommendation of less than five grams of salt per day, one teaspoon. Where did your recommendation come from also? Eating too much salt makes it the top risk factor for diet and nutrition-related deaths. I'm going to read that sentence again. Eating too much salt makes it the top risk factor for diet and nutrition-related deaths. Deaths. Top risk no, factor. No, eating too much salt makes it oh, the that's top not related. Even English. Well, it is English, <laughs> but it's impossible to be true. And more evidence is emerging, documenting links between high sodium intake and increased risk of other health conditions such as gastric cancer, obesity, osteoporosis, and kidney disease. Okay. I got a lot of things to say about this. Mm -hmm. But one of them is, I swear to God, the who was radicalizing me. Like... They just did what to us right? for the last two years, three years, really. But with regard to these experimental treatments that everyone insists on calling vaccines, that's necessary. And the thing that they've got their top people, I don't know, working on is salt. Salt. So these are the same people. We just talked about this. Who, for our health, for our health first suggested, then insisted, then tried to figure out how to mandate taking things into our bodies, which there is no record in human history of having been done safely. Salt is not a living thing. It's an inorganic molecule and, uh, and sodium being part of sodium chloride. Uh, it is something that humans are required to eat, it's an essential nutrient, as the WHO even admits, and we have been eating it, we have been taking it in for our entire history. Our entire history. It's not new to us, right? So is there too much salt in processed food? Yeah. Yeah, there's too much salt in processed food. Is there too much sugar? Yeah. Is there too much, uh, are there too many seed oils? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, how about all of those things that you can't 
even pronounce because they don't come from nature. They were synthesized in the lab in order to kind of feel like, taste to your body like something that is yummy. Surfactants and emulsifiers to change the consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How about in terms of the list of things in processed foods, which constitutes a huge proportion of at least American diets, we take all the ingredients in, pro- in those processed foods and say, which of those things are we most concerned about? And should there be perhaps mandates about not having in food? I'm going to put everything that was synthesized in a lab. It has no history in humans up top at that list. All of those things, which is a large number of things. And then I'm going to put things like seed oils. And then I'm going to put sugars. And if we get that far, if the if salt isn't the only thing left on the list of ingredients in those processed foods, if there's also maybe potatoes, yeah, okay. You can reduce the amount of salt a bit before reduce the amount of potatoes in a potato chip. But seriously, they're going after salt. So our producer, Zachary, has a, uh, has a question. He's had his hand no, raised. No, not a question. But <laughs> he has a comment. My sense is that I, I try to eat almost no processed food, but right. to the extent that we're eating any processed food at all, I, yep. I, these labels like low salt and low sugar yep. terrify me because my sense is I absolutely, if I'm going to eat any of that stuff, I want real sugar and real salt and not something that allows you to put that label on and makes it taste like that with something else because they're not going to make it less sweet or less salty in taste. Well, They're going to replace it with other stuff that sounds, that, that tastes similar enough and is far worse for you, presumably. I don't, I don't want to conflate sugar and salt. I think yeah. sugar is a very serious problem for reasons that we can analyze. Salt is a uh, molecule that we have a many million year history of regulating, right? So the point right. is too our, much- Our bodies can regulate it. To, to but, the ex- so if, if you do entirely home cooking yeah. and you like food that other people might consider salty- you're still not going to oversalt yourself, right? right? It's it's the processed foods that have so many things that are actually terrible for you that the salt and sugar and seed oils are in there to obscure the fact that the other stuff is in there. So, yep. so that so, I mean that's that's anyway, why processed foods is the source of the too much salt to the to the degree that that's a problem. I would just point out we have been having discussions with other biologists over the absurdity of the fear of salt for twenty years. Yep, literally twenty years. Yes. Uh, it has been obvious that the obsession with salt is at the very least overblown. It has jumped the queue of dangers. Somehow it is it is looming very large in people's imagination and all sorts of obvious dangers, pesticide residues and things are at a much lower level of concern. And these things are absolutely flipped. Yep. But I wanna argue that this is actually, that the absurdity of the WHO, which backed this obscene pseudo vaccine campaign becoming obsessed with the danger that salt poses to us, that that is actually a feature, not a bug. And what it is, in my opinion, we have a captured system. That captured system, in order to justify commandeering control, in order to force us to do things that are not in our interest, but are in somebody's interest, has to pretend to be obsessed with our safety. That's right. It is simultaneously obsessed with our safety over certain things, short-term harms that are easily observed, while it is absolutely uninterested in longer-term or more subtle harms, things that can't be proven in a court of law. Mm -hmm. And so we have this system that if you just observe it casually, you think, well, it is their job to watch out for our health and maybe they're a little overreactive, but you know, what are you going to do? They're trying to do their job and maybe they're just a little more aggressive than they should be. Nope. They are simultaneously managing, micromanaging your health in places where probably there's no good that they can do and completely ignoring a blaring safety signal that should be telling them reverse course immediately. And there's just no level that that, that uh, there's no decibel level that would cause them to even acknowledge it. Well, and it's a simple, hold on a second. It's a, it's a simple um, metric that people can grab onto and feel like they're in control and say, I'm reducing salt in my diet. And I'm watching out for my husband who's definitely eating too much salt. So I'm going to watch out for his salt too and make sure that he enjoys his food less. <laughs> this is often the way that manifests, at least in relationships I've seen yep. elsewhere. Uh, and it, it gives people the false sense of agency 
and as if they're doing something, taking control of their health. Uh, when what they're then doing is with all of the things that they really should not be injecting or eating at all, about which the WHO has nothing to say or is actively providing the wrong advice, these people who are thinking very carefully about their salt intake, like, well, I got to trust them. I can't, I can't do all my own analysis. I'm going to think about salt and not about all the things they should be thinking about. And I've got a lot more to say here, but you want to... Well, no, about what Dad was saying, um, they did the same thing with the Johnson & Johnson shots. We remember, and I remember their term yes. was out of an abundance of caution, we're pulling these, at least as a recommendation, because of this yeah. very small number of blood clots they noticed, right? Yep. And so that made it seem like, oh, we're monitoring these things so closely and we really want the best for all of you. And these other vaccines are still really great, but these ones, yeah, and we could look at the numbers and it was like a few in every million yep. cases. Anyway, it made it seem like we are so concerned with your health that we're going after all of the tiny minutia where we can improve your yep. health a little bit. And of course, that's yep. bullshit from the it, beginning. Yep. It's double standards all the way down.